A few weeks back, we looked at Intel's latest Kaby Lake processors featuring the i7-7700K and the i5-7600K. And while these new chips didn't offer a significant increase in performance compared to their predecessor, the Skylake platform, people who are looking for an upgrade from their existing Sandy Bridge or Ivy Bridge systems could benefit from new features and noticeable performance gains. While many of Kaby Lake's true benefits will only be realized by people with older systems or those who absolutely want support for Intel's upcoming opt-in technology, there are still people who will see value in these new CPUs. Today, we're taking a look at yet another Kaby Lake processor, but this time one that costs less than $200, and this is it, the i3-7350K. Now, you may ask, what's so special about this CPU? Well, it comes unlocked for easier overclocking, and I feel like it's a pre-reaction to AMD's upcoming Ryzen architecture rather than a favor being done for budget-minded overclockers. So let's dive in and take a closer look at this little monster from Intel, but before we move on, a quick message from our sponsor. Choose Be Quiet to join the silent revolution. Designed and tested in Germany, their meticulous passion for quiet PC components ranges from premium power supplies, CPU coolers and fans, and innovative PC cases, all of which aim to achieve one thing. Is this thing even on? That's right, totally quiet power supplies, even under load. Silent Wings fans deliver awesome airflow with noise that doesn't reach your ears, all enclosed in a package designed to be quiet. Now, before we take a closer look at the CPU, I want to get something off my shoulders. You see, many here at Hardware Connects still believe that the i3-6100 was one of the best options during the Skylake generation. It had two physical cores clocked at 3.7 GHz, along with hyper-threading, and it just cost $120. While it may not have been a chart topper in synthetic benchmarks or high-level rendering, its performance in games was extremely good. The i3-7350K follows a similar tradition, but it offers a few extra goodies that budget-focused overclocking enthusiasts would love to play around with, but that comes with a cost. Now, the specs on the 7350K CPU are pretty interesting. The 4.2 GHz base clock speed aligns perfectly with the $245 i5-7600K, a processor that also features four threads, though across a native quad-core layout. Also remember, i3 processors don't have access to Intel's Turbo Boost technology and comes with very limited cache, so don't expect performance metrics to match the 7600K CPU, despite the clock speed similarities. Turbo Boost Max may be the biggest omission here since without it, the 7350K won't be able to consistently remain at higher frequencies. So what will the difference be? Well, we'll find out about that during the benchmarks. One small hiccup in this equation may come from the current pricing of this processor. Even though Intel says it's supposed to cost about 170 US dollars, actually finding it for less than $190 is a challenge right now. Price-wise, that causes the i3-7350K to compete against the i5-7500, and as you'll see in a bit later, that's a fight it just can't win. Another factor that most people should take into consideration is compatible motherboard pricing. Right now, you need a Z270 motherboard to at least take advantage of the overclocking capabilities of the 7350K, and these boards are not cheap. They're almost as pricey as the CPU, which really questions the price-to-performance aspect. It's already obvious that Intel's higher-end unlocked Kaby Lake CPUs reach the 4.9 to 5.2 GHz mark provided they're adequately cooled. In the launch review, I was easily able to hit over 5 GHz with both the 7700K and the 7600K. But realistically speaking, you're not going to spend $150 on a CPU cooler to cool a $170 processor. It just doesn't make any sense. So with that in mind, I approached overclocking from a slightly more budget-focused mindset and used a Noctua NH-U12S, which costs between $40 to $50. The end result was that the i3-7350K was easily able to hit 5 GHz with just a few tweaks within the BIOS, and it was dead stable during our 6-hour IDA64 system stability test, which is our gold standard for determining whether or not an overclock is stable. One thing to note is that even though 5.1 GHz and even 5.2 GHz were stable for many benchmarks, neither was able to stay stable over the long term. So how does the reference clock and overclocked 7350K stack up with other CPUs we reviewed over the last few years? We try to equalize the test systems as much as possible with all memory, GPUs, etc. running at the same speed. 
Note that slightly older video drivers were used since this allowed us to standardize testing procedures across multiple CPU generations. So let's get on with this and start with basic synthetic benchmarks. As you can see, the 7350K at 5 GHz breaks the barrier between the lower end i3-6100 and the mid-ranged i5-6400 CPU. There isn't a massive difference between the stock and the overclocked speeds, but later on in the tests, it stacks up really well against the very popular i5-4670K CPU, which isn't overclocked by the way. Now, I can't say exactly how this processor would stack up against the i5-7500, but as you can see, even when overclocked, the 7350K trades below the stock i5-6500. This is likely due to the limited amount of cache becoming a bottleneck in some scenarios. Moving on to single-threaded testing where multi-threading and cache don't matter as much as you can see that the i3-7350K boasts some amazing results. This will likely translate into some very competitive gaming results too. There's no doubt this chip will perform really well in programs that are emphasized for single-threaded performance. Mind you, the other high-end CPUs were not overclocked for our tests. This is just to give you a rough idea as to how well a $170 overclocked dual-core 4-thread CPU performs against its much expensive counterparts. That is particularly true in the real-world benchmarks you're seeing now. Many of these tests stress all four threads, with the only exception being our Dolphin emulation that uses a single thread to process a simple game scene. While overclocking doesn't speed things up significantly, the premium you pay for the K-series chip doesn't translate into performance that can consistently beat Intel's i5 processors. Gaming, on the other hand, was a pleasant surprise. Our initial tests use a lower 720p resolution in an effort to take the GPU out of the equation and allow the processors to shine on their own. As you can see, the 5GHz 7350K CPU stacks up amazingly well with Intel's Broadwell eCPUs, and the gap between the stock and the overclocked frequencies is pretty significant too. What's important to take away from these results is that not too many games properly use more than two threads, so the 7350K is able to climb its way near the top of the charts. And now onto 1080p where most people are gaming. Here we can see that the GPU becomes more of a bottleneck, and as a result, many of the processors align with one another. Overclocking makes a very little difference, so while it might look good to be running at 5 GHz, in reality, it doesn't really change frame rates that much. Now, this situation might change as multi-core aware APIs like Vulkan and DX12 become more popular, but for the next little while at least, if you're on a budget, it doesn't make sense to pay a fortune for your processor. Instead, put that money towards beefing up your graphics card. I mean, seriously, just do that. Power consumption was just as expected. Running stock, it's actually quite impressive, almost tying with the i3-6100, but when overclocked, things shift a little north. The 7350K consumes a lot more power than the i5-6500, but it offers similar multi-threaded performance, so there's a give and take policy here. Oh, hey there. NCX.com is Canada's leading e-tailer for anything your mind desires. Just keep within those categories, which are plenty, and get tempted by their weekly deals. Visit NCX.com for all them sweet deals. So, what can I say about the i3-7350K? To be honest, it's a very confusing CPU. Because you see, the performance is fantastic when compared against Intel's other i3 series chips, and the ability to overclock does give you some benefits uh, in many applications. What bothers me the most is the price that you pay for this. At $170, it's already pretty expensive, and with current pricing hovering around $190, there are far better options out there that don't necessarily need overclocking to grant you amazing performance. Not only that, but it's also the other components like the motherboard, cooling, GPU, RAM, etc. that all come into the equation. If you're going Z270, you might as well spend an extra $75 and pick the i5-7600K CPU because you'll get fantastic multi-threaded performance when overclocked, and if you want more power, you can easily upgrade to the i7-7700K CPU. At this price, there's very little value with the 7350K, especially if you have to pay over $170 for it. If budget is first and foremost on your mind, one amazing option might be the i5-7500 or i5-7400 alongside a B250 based motherboard. With that combination, you'd be able to invest in a much better graphics card and still achieve CPU performance that's similar or better than an overclocked i3-7350K. And that's where I'm going to end this review. What do you guys think of the i3-7350K? Um, does the performance justify its price tag, or would you spend the extra cash on a much powerful processor? Let us know in the comments down below. I'm Ibar with Hurricane X. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.